Hey Mary, so tell me, what did you see God do on this trip? So I seen the Lord move in such a miraculous and beautiful way through the harvest there. Um, in Africa, one thing that I noticed is that the harvest is truly so plentiful. So we would evangelize basically every day. During the morning hours, we would run outreaches for the widows, the children. Um, we would give gifts. We would meet with the chiefs. And then later on in the evenings, we would go evangelize to the village. And one thing that was striking my heart um, and impacting me so much was how the people responded to the gospel. So we were there for about two weeks or so. And we saw maybe 300 or even more salvations. And so wow. every time we preached the gospel, they would respond. And to me, it's, it's not a new thing because I do ministry and I see people respond to the Lord, but the number was out of this world because I find that when I minister here in America, it's like you almost have to convince people that they need Jesus. You have to convince them that they're broken, that they're, that they're needy. And it's because here, the need isn't so much in your face because you can provide for yourself, you can feed yourself, you you can take care of your basic needs for the most part. At least that's probably the life that most of us experience. But in Africa, you can't. Um, you might not have the food that you need. You live in a mud hut. Um, you live in very close quarters with a lot of people. And so the need is great and they have a desperation in their heart. And so when they hear of hope, they're responding to hope. And so their response is what, what kind of um, got my heart the most. And so one thing that stood out to me as well was after our outreaches and evangelizing, the chief of the villages would come to Pastor Chris regularly. I think this happened three or four times. Um, the chief would come to Pastor Chris and ask him to take land and plant a church in their village because they wanted to hear more about Jesus. They wanted to know more of who he was and they wanted him in their midst. Um, and I thought that was so beautiful because there there are churches in different villages, but they wanted a church in their village. They wanted Jesus to be among them. Um, and Pastor wow. Chris, his heart to plant these churches. He's a church planner and he raises up pastors. But his reply was, we would love to, but we don't have the pastors to do it. Um, and so it kind of, when I would hear them ask and Pastor Chris say, you know, we, we want to do that, but we're not able to right now. So we can kind of keep it in mind and continue a relationship with you, but we can't plant a church here. It kind of struck my heart because it it made the verse that, you know, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few come alive right before my eyes because they are, they were so needy and so desperate and so wanting of the gospel, but there were so few laborers to respond to that need. Love it. And so, what did God do in Mary Bellamy on this trip? Mm -hmm. So Jesus, honestly, he was speaking to me before the trip um, about laying my life down in a greater way and what that looks like. Um, and so before I was going on the trip, he he kept pointing out um, things that I loved about my life. So I love my car. I love my home. I love dressing up, all of these things. And he began to ask me, what if I were asking you to lay those things down? And I was like, oh, Jesus, you know, I do love you. I want to serve you. But do we have to go there? And when <laughs> I went to Africa, I realized how important it was to go there in a sense and to really be willing and ready to lay down everything because the harvest is so plentiful. And so as I was ministering throughout the villages and sharing my testimony, one thing that was highlighted to me in my heart was how much God has done in my life and delivered me from. And it was almost like a question was set in my heart where, where I was asking myself, you know, Jesus has invested so much in me. Is he receiving the greatest return on his investment? You know, investors, when when they invest money, they want the greatest return. Well, Jesus, he's invested so much within us, knowing that we're liabilities, you know, but he's, he's placed treasures within us. You know, he's given us talents. He's given us um, things from his kingdom and planted them into us. And he's looking for a return on his investment. And so as I was going throughout the village, one thing the Lord asked me was, well, and I can't even say it was the Lord, but one thing that really sat in my spirit was, is he receiving the greatest return on his investment? And, and I was pondering that throughout my trip and even afterwards seeing, you know, what does it look like for the Lord to receive 
the greatest return on, on what he's invested in me and, and all that he's done in my life. Another thing that really highlighted to me was, is my, have I maximized my influence at the present time? You know, everything that God has poured into me, am I really pouring it out and have I maximized the influence that God has given me or is there more for me to do right now? Um, and so these have been questions that I've been asking myself in Africa and even after Africa it made me think, you know, as well, is my life counting for the kingdom or am I too busy building my own kingdom or too busy worried about my own comforts or is my mind really set on the kingdom? You know, cause the Lord says, of course, seek ye first and all things will be added, but what am I actually seeking first? You and know, if you were talking to people from Reveal and, um, you know, they're, they're sitting there with you, what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. um, I would want to challenge their thinking and to kind of pull them into an eternal perspective instead of such a temporal one. And I would ask them if what they are doing with their life will count for the kingdom. Or is it something that would burn up if it were tested by fire? Um, and so really to examine their own fruit and to see what fruit would actually last and what fruit would be burned up. Um, and so to live with that in mind when we're trying to accomplish the next thing or if we're being um, overly ambitious or striving for something, I guess it would be, is it, is it worth it? worth it in terms of is it going to last because if, if it doesn't last it's not worth it um, but if last it question for somebody that's uh never been on a mission trip uh this one sounds sounds radical i don't know that i could do this you're obviously talking to some super spiritual people that that's who should go on mission trips and i shouldn't go what would you <laughs> no i think as long as you have the holy spirit you can do whatever he, he prompts you to do because it's really not about you and your own ability. It's about the Holy Spirit and his ability. And he can do great and mighty things. He even said that greater things would we do when he left this earth. And so he's equipped us with absolutely everything we need to further the kingdom of God because he's going to do it within us. So it's not so much about your ability or your inability, but his ability. And so he's going to do it through you. You can, you can do whatever God is leading you to do, whether it's a missions trip in States or out of States. My first missions trip was to Haiti and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, most people turn, deem that as um, a difficult missions trip, but because it's the Holy Spirit empowering us, it's not. He's the one who, who um, tailors us and trains us and equips us and then sends us out. So if the Lord is equipping you and sending you out, go and he'll do the rest. Amen. Amen. Walk in obedience. That's all we're called Amen. to do. Mary, thanks so much for taking the time. We appreciate you and your heart for the Lord. We appreciate your uh, obedience and uh, what God's doing in you and through you.